Now, are you, where are you located? I'm actually located in Jordan, and uh, there is an opportunity that the Dead Sea is actually 30 minutes away from where I live. So. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that the if you need me to do some experimentations for you and report to you, that would be amazing as well. Up, upper Dead Sea is better than Lower Dead Sea. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, cool. More pol- It's more polluted the further down you go. Uh, I've tried making it uh, just simply by dropping lye on uh, Dead Sea water. You can't, ama- you can't imagine the, the amount of precipitate that, that would form immediately without doing yeah. anything, actually. Yeah. And I have, to, I have to dilute Dead Sea water, I think, six, six times. Uh, six times as much fresh water as Dead Sea water in order to get um, a an amount of precipitate that I can wash. Uh huh. Otherwise, it just fills up the container. Yeah, that's that's what I noticed. I tried that with regular sea, store bought sea salt, uh, sea salt, and it's not nearly as as good as that. Not you can't compare them. Yeah. I wonder if you can. What's the secret? Why is Dead Sea water so special? Uh. It's it's a repository of all the minerals that eroded from all the mountains in the region. Mm -hmm. And the minerals get concentrated. um, Well, first they get dissolved by fungi and and moss and things like that on the rocks. Uh Uh, I don't know if you've heard the phrase, moss doesn't grow on a rolling stone. Um, but, yeah, but, but moss does grow on a stationary stone, mm-hmm. and the moss solubilizes mm-hmm. these minerals from the rocks. Yeah, the soluble minerals then are taken in by plants, and plants can only use minerals that have been solubilized from the soil. And so once they're solubilized and they've gone into the plant, when the plant um, gets shipped somewhere else, it gets lost. The minerals get lost from that soil where the plant grew. Mm -hmm. And eventually they get flushed into the ocean or into the Dead Sea in in some cases. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, But they get flushed somewhere where they don't go back to the soil. That's why when we replace these minerals in the soil, either from concentrated from Dead Sea salt or Dead Sea water or Atlantic Ocean water or Pacific Ocean water, it doesn't matter what salt ocean water we we concentrate them from. Mm Mm-hmm we see a doubling of plant growth in a couple of years. Have you heard of people who um, um, literally live a lifestyle without food? I've heard of that, and uh, it it doesn't sound particularly pleasant. I've noticed that I, I am not as hungry as I used to be, mm-hmm. and... I eat more out of habit than out of hunger. Exactly. And so I have a habit that I've developed over 62 years of of life of always eating first thing in the morning because it used to be if I didn't eat first thing in the morning, I'd have a headache from low blood sugar. Yeah. Now it's not it's not that case. Uh-huh. I, I I no longer get headaches from low blood sugar. I don't ever experience the the low blood sugar symptoms since I've been using. Oh, I I'd say after I started using Ormus for maybe um, three years or four years, I started noticing that I, I I wasn't having the low blood sugar headaches that I used to have. Yeah, I try to to avoid taking any form of sugar. Um... Like at all. Um, be, be, I, I don't know. It's just a personal experimentation. But I've, I've noticed that low blood sugar is is something like, you know, withdrawal symptoms that addicts uh, go through. 
Exactly. So it happens for a while, and if you don't really take it, uh, the body then just cleans it out, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go through the cycle unless you take it again. That that seems to be the case. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. How do you feel um, that awareness of people around is, you know, is it growing to because the implications, especially for something as grand as Ormus, and um, you know, how, how do you feel? Are, are people responding to it? Uh, is the, is awareness being raised? It's difficult to be. It's difficult to get people aware of it, mm-hmm. um, for several reasons. Um, one reason is. People are so um, programmed, I guess would be the way to put it. Their their ideas are so dependent upon what existing structures put out, like uh, corporations or governments or religions and so on, Mm -hmm. that they have... um, they have difficulty accepting anything that that's outside of their dominant paradigm. So it's basically still the way it is. You you don't feel that um, you know awareness is increasing. It is increasing, yeah. but it, it's increasing at a rather slow slow rate. Let's say slower than I'd like it to. Yeah, of course, of course. I think that after people become more and more aware of the problems that we're facing globally, problems like water shortages, hunger, um, drought, yeah. he, heat, heat, greater heat, uh, unusual weather, thing, all of these things, uh, people will say, well, what can I do to get around this or, or resolve this? And, and they may be op- more open to possible ways to solve these problems yeah we, we really have to snap out of our emotions and really you know solve the real problems and let's just take the right way because we, we're just acting you know against nature right now yeah yeah um i wonder uh Barry, have you uh, read reich's contact with space uh, wilhelm reich yeah i haven't you haven't. That's such a treat. Uh, uh, there are a few pages that speak about his discovery of Ormus. And mm-hmm. I'll actually scan them to you and send them to you because oh. they are such a treat. Well, he talked about Orgone, and I think Orgone may be related to Ormus. In this book, this is this was the last one he wrote in the 50s, and he literally spoke about Ormus. Apparently, he's the one who discovered it fa- first. And uh, actually, he speaks about Ormus the exact same specifications, uh, properties of it. And he speaks Uh about something that seems to go to oppose Ormus, something like the de-Ormus, a black material. Well, he he called, he the the term he used, as my understanding is, it was orgone, O-R-G-O-N-E. Yeah, orgone is the energy, and dor or de-orgone is the opposing, the energy that opposes orgone. Or let's not say, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now I think I think that Ormus maybe is the wire that carries the or, orgone signal or or the orgone energy. From what he wrote, it's uh-huh. uh, it sounds like he was talking about the the, the very exact substance. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, you're gonna find that an amazing treat. And what's yeah. more, more interesting is that he he talked about uh, something that, uh, that oppo- something that opposes Ormus. Let's say, for example, if if Ormus, a white material, uh, um, you know, uh, stimulates growth in plants, the the Ormus is, is going to stimulate the opposite. Right. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. we we haven't noticed anything except maybe many of these elements that have an Ormus form also have a a metal form, and their metal form is toxic. If it contains met- a metal form. Yes. Uh, do you mean if Ormus is still in its in its metallic form? If the same elements have an, an Ormus form and a metallic form. As if you, for example, create a create a solution of copper, for example, without uh, uh, where without, for example, using distilled water, in in, in which sense it would form compounds. Right. 
Right. Okay. And, and we think that even even distilled water contains a considerable amount of ormus. Maybe um, one eighth of it is is ormus. One eighth. Wow. It's a very significant amount of one pound out of eight pounds of distilled water. I think is is ormus. Uh, there was a researcher, I believe he was in in Australia, and he said uh, he told me that that if you figure out what water H two O should weigh, it should weigh seven point three pounds per gallon. But but ordinary water always even distilled water weighs eight point three three pounds per gallon. So there's a pound of something in there that nobody knows what it is. Well, that what is it? That's kind of the definition of warmest. Yeah, sometimes it's heavier, sometimes it's lighter. So yeah, there's a gentleman in in uh, Idaho, in eastern Idaho, uh, which is a state right over from Oregon, where I live, mm -hmm. and he he is trapping water, running a magnetic trap, spinning uh, the water in a magnetic field and taking the stuff that retreats from the, that levitates away from the magnetic field and putting it on plants. And he's getting results with plants that are very similar to the results we're getting from seawater, Ormus. Wow. Ormus concentrated from seawater. Mm -hmm. He's, he has to, he, in order to sell his product, he has to have it weighed. One, he took a one-gallon uh, bottle of this water, about four liters, and uh, sent it to a, a laboratory to have it evaluated. And they kept it for about a month. And over that period of time, the, the weight of the water changed. It went up and down and up and down again amazing it went it it changed by as much as a, a pound for that gallon of water amazing the implications would just change the world as we know it if if people are ready to listen to it yes yeah there's no doubt there's no doubt i've uh, followed some of the work of uh, dr john miluski Yes, if I spell his name right, I've noticed uh -huh. some of his articles on your, on your website, and I've actually uh, um, witnessed transmuting uh, metals exactly the way Hudson said it, where metals uh -huh. you know change from one form to another. Yeah, and uh, it's amazing because you start with nothing, and then you start getting metals, then they start dis to disappear, and then you are back with your original substance if you don't really catch the metals at the right time. Right. And it's amazing. <laughs> it, it is very, very much so, yes. Yeah. What do you think about his research regarding uh, superlight? Uh, 